All right, welcome back. So you're probably wondering how am I gonna do all those crimping things that you did in the electrical box. So let me show you the tools you're gonna need and how you're gonna use them. We'll do two examples. I'll crimp a small wire for you and then we'll crimp a very large wire, the far up. So starting off, um, you're gonna need a pair of like um, these clickers here. These allow you to cut the big wire. And again, there'll be links for all this stuff. And this allows you again to go around this. This, this is a four rock cable. So I had to bite through and, and to me that's really important. Um, over here we have three different kinds of crimpers, right? We have this kind. Now this is the one that does what they call a ferrule nut. F-E-R-R-U-L-L-E -L -L -E or L-E, just one L. But essentially you're going to put it in there and crimp it and that's what makes a little square. And this also is the same thing for the smaller wire. It makes like a square. And these are for the specific purposes when you're putting it under like a terminal. So in marine applications specifically, in DC applications, you want to have, instead of having all those strands of wire being able to fray or fall out of the terminal, by putting the crimp on, which I'll show you here, um, allows for the surface area to be matched with the amount of energy flowing through the wire. And I got a bunch of kits here. This is a heat shrink kit. Um, and again, this is a little kit for uh, small crimps, but the idea is basically the same. So you're going to take a crimp, right? It looks like a little tube and you're going to slide it over and you're going to crimp it. And then again, this is for every wire size that they make them. So again, in the description in the video, you'll see um, based upon the, the application for this and then for your application, it'll be a little bit different. But I would highly recommend if you're doing a mobile application and you're doing DC stuff that you really need to consider using these. Again, these are ferrules. They go, they slide in here pretty easily. You have the wire in there. It just sits in there just like that. And you're going to crimp it. I won't crimp it right now and throw it away. But again, relatively speaking, this is going to provide your professional um, installation. It's going to last a long time. And it's just, it's just built to last. And then again, for the crimps of this size, you're going to probably put a little bit of heat shrink on. Again, what happens is, is when you, uh, when you cut this wire, uh, with the utility knife, which we're going to do real time right now. Get rid of this too, so we don't have a mess. You realize with like a battery cable that there are hundreds or thousands of strands in here. So by putting, by making a measurement on where you're going to cut the insulation and then stripping that back, when you put this on, even when you crimp it, you don't want any of those things to escape. I think it's a real more professional way to look at doing it. And also, um, the other application for the heat shrink is you're going to also be covering this terminal, right? So when you're going on to like a, a, a bolt, right, or a stud that's inside like the equipment, all that's really showing is this little section of the, of the uh, copper clad aluminum or a copper uh, lug, which is really important. So with that said, I got a little bit of foam here. I'm going to put down here because I'm going to get up this big crimping tool, which I didn't take out yet. But step one is step one. And um, some people will also take this and cut this and then they'll put a little tape around it. I'm not going to do that. And I've been doing this for, for a little while. So you're going to realize like that the inside of the terminal eventually kind of it, it's, it splays out right inside here. But really what we're looking for is getting the meat. So you can stuff in a little bit more. But remember, when you do that, it's going to get crimped, almost like putting your toes in like a, in like a shoe. Right. It's not going to be comfortable. So what we're going to do for this application, we're just going to cut some off. Take a utility knife and score it. We're going to be gentle when we score it because, you know, what we don't want is those wires to be frayed and poking out. So we're going to do a full circle around this guy. And we're going to just slice that direction. Peel it back. And you see there's some paper on there. And sometimes I need a little bit more encouragement. Like maybe I just lightly scored it. And that's really what you want to do. You want to lightly score it. That guy. Boom. There we go. I might need to clean up a little bit, remove some of the paper and so forth. Like I have a little bit of a section here, a little haircut, and be careful not to um, damage any of the wires. Okay. So here we go. Take that, put that over here. Um, paint on how many ones you're going to be doing. This is another really important, uh, I would just hate these that were pro tip, but what you'll find is. With a lot of the heat shrinks is that they'll only go over the wire a certain distance, right? So if you're doing two ends, just remember you'll be able to get it over, right? It'll be stuck. So what you want to do is always put the heat shrink on first. 
get that beyond. Because again, it's going to sit down here. It's not going to sit on the top. So always get that kind of moseying on down ahead of time. And you're going to slide that on there. You're going to look at it. It's going to look good. It looks great. Feels good. Seats well. Again, if you didn't cut enough off, you want to go back and take it off and take another eighth of an inch off. So that's step one. So we got this extra piece. Now, if you remember from inside the cabinet, I kept all these. And then I use them as tie wraps um, so you can recycle these. And by the way, I have the heat gun here, which we're going to use in a minute. And there's a bunch of different heat guns. I've had a quite a different few over the years, but there you go. Okay, so I'm going to just take a piece of foam here and a, and a little uh, cloth so I don't, like, damage my table. Again, this is the third crimping tool, just to go back a little bit. So we had the small one for the small wires. We have the middle one for the medium-sized wires. Again, these are for ferrule and for ferrule, right? For the ferrule nuts, for the tubes, right? This guy is for the crimps. Again, I'll be linking the description. This is hydraulic, right? It works off of doing this. So there's a little knob on here. They'll say open and close or on and off. And there's a bunch of what they call dies. These are different dies in here. And essentially they make like a little hexagon or yeah, hexagon over the wire, right? And um, yeah, so they've, they've come down in price quite a bit. So essentially what you're doing is you want to line this guy up with what you have here. Now, a lot of times, again, this, uh, the, the flat part of the crimp is too big. So what do you got to do? You got to take this out. So I'll make a little room here because this can be a little bit uh, cumbersome from a physical space. So we have our wire. You want to make sure it's in there snug. We're going to take our crimping tool. And again, we've, we've taken the pin out so we can create a bigger throat. You can actually just remove that. And then you're going to put this back in. And you line everybody up and you're going to close the pin just like that. Then you're going to turn this to on. And essentially that starts the compression process. And it doesn't really matter how you have this laid out in here. Again, it's making like an octagon, almost like a stop sign. But you just want to make sure as you start going that this doesn't start creeping out because then it'll just kind of fall out, right? So whether you hold it like I'm doing until it gets started, right? And get your arm on there and just start pumping. And then you'll see slowly that'll start coming together. And again, you can go until you're, you, you like the location. And essentially, I always want it close to, um, I would say halfway between, you know, where it starts to ferrule down, where it starts to splay down, and where it is, where it is in the middle. Because you want to get the, the meat of the, the wire in there. So now I know that it's locked and I can keep going. And it's always hard to do this because using mechanical force, they do make some tools that are um, battery powered. But again, for the amount of times I was doing this, these things are about $100, maybe a little bit more. I forget now. It's been a while. I've had these for years, but um, they've come down tremendously in price. Again, look at your application. Like for me, I wasn't doing that many connections. So to me, it was like I didn't need a big hydraulic one. Actually, I still have some hydraulic ones, but this is for this application is perfect. And as you start looking at this thing, what you'll notice is, which, so when the, when the two dies meet, it's very hard to see, but you'll notice that you'll, as they get closer and closer and closer, they'll, they'll lose the gap and you'll think you can't see any light coming through. And that's really where you want to get. Now, this doesn't have an exact setup like when we're doing the plumbing video. If you haven't seen the plumbing crimp video, you'll see it eventually, but it's essentially being able to crimp this thing down, eventually it'll hit a wall, like it won't go any further. So if you feel like I'm crimping and crimping or I over crimped, you won't over crimp because again, it can only go as, as far as uh, seat, seating on both sides, right? And if you don't go far enough, when you take it out, it'll fall out. So either way, you're gonna, you're gonna know if you've done well. So as I look in here, I can still see a little bit of light. So I'm gonna keep going. 
And eventually you'll probably be like, wow, it's really getting tight. And that means it's, you've also reached the end. A little bit further to go. Okay, that looks good. So what do we do? Then we take the tool and we just release the pressure. And there you go. So what do we have? We have a beautiful connection, right? And what's the next step? So now we can pull it and turn it and make sure it's not going to come out and it's not coming anywhere. And it makes again a nice hexagon connection. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to heat shrink it. So remember I said how snug it is? So there you go. So now we're going to put that over there like that. Looks good all the way around. Again, back to having a 3000 watt inverter. I think this Wagner is, I don't know, 800 watts or 1000 watts, maybe 300 watts. Oh, 1200 watts. So there's a low and a high on this particular one. So again, if I only had a 1000 watt inverter, it might be unhappy. It might trip off if I turn this thing on. But anyway, let's do the heat shrink and you'll see the process. So as you're doing the heat shrinking, you want to constantly be moving this around until it gets warm and it'll actually grapple around the, um, the uh, terminal, which is really awesome. So let's just do it. So there's low and high speed. So it'll take a minute or two to um, get going, but it'll start pretty quickly. Like you can see, it, it almost immediately starts suctioning on. That's it. All done. Pretty straightforward. And that's why I know you can do this too. Again, uh, back to rewinding is measure, right? You can even take a tape measure. If you're not sure, you can put a tape measure in there, put a pencil in there, pull it out, make a mark on the on the insulation with like a Sharpie. And you know how far back you have to cut. Pair, uh, score the outside of the insulation very gently because you don't want all those little wires to come out. Once that's done, you're going to, again, you're going to put the little heat shrink on first. Put the um, crimp on second, crimp that thing till it seats on both ends like we talked about, and then you're done. So there is a four up battery cable. Took in no, no time to do. Okay, the next we're gonna do is the smaller one. So we got smaller wire, right? Now, did I bring my strippers? Yes, okay. So with this one, you're gonna need a stripper. Um, you can use a utility knife, but I really think a stripper is even better. So in this instance, I'm just going to use a piece of red wire, maintain the, uh, the tradition here. And again, in these little kits, they go 16, 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, and 2. So you got a variety of, um, of um, uh, ferrules in here. And by the way, ferrule is 1L. It just says it on here. I forgot. So as we look at this wire, we know that this is a, looks like a 12 gauge. I'm pretty sure it is 12 gauge. So you go to the stripper over here and we say, okay, where's the 12 gauge? Here it is. Going to strip that back. We got a wire stripped. Going to go find a 12 ferrule. I think it's this guy right here, the gray one. So again, this one almost comes with a heat shrink on it. Again, if you're using like a larger size wire, like a number eight or number two, it doesn't have the heat shrink built in, then you would heat shrink it. Again, these kits are really easy to have and I highly recommend having them as well as the other, the larger heat shrink kit here, which I showed you and has all the different kit, all the different ones. This one goes, and they say one eighth up to one inch. So you just gotta do the cross reference to what wire size it is. So here it is, we put it in here like this. And we know that it's gone far enough. And that's the nice thing about having this one with the heat shrink because it'll stop, right? It's like a little connector. And so you can see here, I, I stripped it to almost exactly the length of the ferrule. That was really lucky. So we put that in there like that. Again, this is a, the smaller version of the tool. So they come in all different sizes, but this is really straightforward. You're going to put it in there like this. 
and it's going to crimp. Done. Now what do you have? You have a square terminal. I know it's really hard to see. Let me see if I can bring this up closer to you. Now you can see, right? We have a square all the way around. And that's really what you want. So again, when you're tightening down the screw on like a terminal, whether it be a circuit breaker or any kind of terminal, you want that screw to have the highest amount of surface area, right? So that the electrons can flow, specifically if it's DC. And again, even if it's AC, right? You saw when I stripped this wire, there's a lot of little strands in here. Uh, when you put that under like a terminal, um, that's why almost everywhere in the ambulance, and I didn't even really point that out, but even in the electrical box, if you go back to one of those videos, that's under a terminal, they're almost always using a fork, or what they have is a screw with a plate on it, right? So the wire is behind that plate. But again, for the stuff on the inverters and things, I did this for everything, as you probably saw in the previous videos. If you haven't, go back and check that out. And that's pretty much it. Again, in this one, you don't have to put the heat shrink on because it's already built in. Like I said, uh, based upon the wire size here, this one's from 8, 6, 4, and 2. You'd need to. Otherwise, um, they already come with a little, essentially, heat shrink or, you know, to protect the wire, some fraying. And it's also a gauge, too, when you're putting the wire under the terminal, like if you've reach the bottom of the terminal right it, it kind of bottoms out for you i think that's all i have to say about heat shrinking and uh, crimping and if you have any questions again check out the video below uh, leave some comments in the video below or any any questions you have and again these tools are relatively inexpensive and um they're really easy to use i know you can do this okay i'll see you in the next video